In this video, we're going to write a little script in vPython which will simulate a single pendulum. So if we start off with a browser and if you type in glow script into the browser, it takes you on to an online uh, integrated development environment for the vPython. So you can click on that. Now you can log in to this via your uh, Google account. So you can set up an account there and, and log into it via Google. So I've already um, set my account up here. So if I can click on here, I, I can set up a little folder there. You see a little folder there that you can set up. And so if I head into my folder, and what we'll do is we'll create a new program from scratch. So you just get into that um, create new program. So we'll call the program um, uh, pen space one. Okay. So that's how it's created that new program. Now I'm still in the process of learn learning uh, V Python. So um, the whole idea of this video is I, I got the script online from uh, a blog. I've put a note down below where the blog is. Uh, it's a guy. What's he's called? Um, tech for the curious it's called so i'll put a note down there below it's well worth going and looking at that but i thought i would talk my way through the code and uh, it'll help me to talk my way through it and it might be of use to you as well okay so we'll start off we'll create something called a display okay so the width of the display width equals 1200 and we can make the height equal 800 and we can center the display um, now we center the display using uh, a vector so the vector is a three-dimensional vector it's x y and z so we'll give it um, 0 comma 12 comma 0 as the center of it and we can make the background back ground equals um, color dot and I'll make it black okay so that's a first line of code now it won't actually do anything um, because we have to create a, a little instance before it will do it and so that's actually run but nothing's actually happened so we've got to create a little instances before any of this happens okay so what exactly is it we want to create so let's just go in I'll oh, actually move over that a wee bit so that's a bit better so we'll actually go in and we'll have a look in a program here it's called smooth draw which I use in order just to, to draw some of this out so if we take a, a pendulum and the pendulum system is really going to be made up of three components it's going to be a pivot here okay it's going to be a length of string or whatever it is it's, it's going to be used and it's going to be a little mass okay so those three things what we're going to call those things is a pivot a rod and a bob okay now I'll go over the rest of the little bit of maths here um, just in a minute but we'll go back here and we'll start writing this start writing this up okay so We'll start off with the, the bob. So we can create a bob by creating an instance called a sphere. Okay, so the sphere will have a position and it'll have it'll be a vector again and it'll just be an x, y, and z. So if we give it the position um, 5,2,0. Now we can also define the radius of this sphere and we'll define the radius as 0.5 and we can then define the color of the sphere color equals color dot and we'll make the sphere blue okay so that there should have created a little instance so if I run this now hope everyone's okay then you can see I've created a little sphere now you can right click on that and you can drag it up and shift it about so um, you can see how quickly 
you're able to produce a nice looking little image. So that's us done the sphere. Now we're going to have to set up the fulcrum. Now the fulcrum is going to be set up by a box. So that's the other instance we're creating is called a box. And the box again has got a position and it's a vector. And we'll give that position um, 0, um, 20, 0. And it's also got a size as well, so you need a length, like a length, breadth and height. So the size, again, it's written in a vector. And it's a length, breadth and height, so we'll give it, it's 10, comma, uh, not 0.5, which is the thickness, and 10. Okay. Uh, we're also going to be interested in finding the colour as well. So we need to get colour equals colour dot, and we'll make it green. Okay, so that should have set up everything's written out here okay. A little thing that we're going to use is the fulcrum. So you can see the start of our system. We've got a fulcrum here. We've got a little bob. So that's just two lines of code and you can see we're already starting to produce something that looks like our system. So we're also interested in creating the connection between it which is going to be done using a cylinder. Okay, now the cylinder again it's got a position and it's a vector. Now the position is just one end of it so if we make the cylinder one end of it is going to be the actual pivot position which again we've already noted above is going to be 0, 20, 0. And the cylinder, the way it works is the uh, we don't define the other end of the cylinder, we just define the the axis of the cylinder. And again, the axis is given by a vector. Now, I'll just put something random in just um, at the moment, just so you can see how this is going to work. Okay, so this isn't what we're going to finish up with. I've just put it in just to um, show you actually working. Okay, so uh, again, we can hit, take the radius of the cylinder so obviously it's meant to be like a little bit of strength it's going to be really thin so radius 0 0.1 and we can make the color equals color dot and we'll make it red okay so that there let's see if we've got that down right cylinder radius radius so if I run that, again the rod's just pointing in a random direction, okay, so we're going to sort that out in a minute, but you can see quite quickly we've got the three components we were looking for, the rod, fulcrum and the little bob. Now to make things run a bit smoother here and simpler, we noted that we're reusing this vector 0, 20, 0, 0, 20, 0 and we're going to be using that over and over again. Okay, and that there is going to be the, the pivot point. So we can actually just put that vector into, into a variable, pivot, and we'll just call that variable as the represents the vector 0, 20, 0. So we don't need to keep writing down vector 0, 20, 0. So we can just replace that in here. So that means that that vector. 0, 20, 0 can just be replaced with position equals and it's just pivot. Okay, and the same here, the cylinder position, one end of the cylinder, position equals pivot. Okay, so we've not done anything really different, it's still just run exactly the same. Okay, it's just written out a little bit neater and a bit simpler. Um, now, one other thing we have to do is we're going to connect the cylinder. Um, we're going to connect one end of the cylinder to the pivot and one end of the cylinder to the the bob. Okay. Now, before we go and do that, one thing we're going to notice is that we 
In order to use these instances, the sphere, the box and the cylinder, to reuse them over and over again, we need to stick each of these into their own um, variable or give them their own names. Okay, So we can call the sphere um, uh, the bob. So that's the bob. So that's defining the bob. The box is defining, and we'll call it the, the roof. And the cylinder is going to be defined as the um, road. Okay. So again, it doesn't make any difference to it, but it just means that we can reuse these instances as, as bob, roof, and rod throughout the rest of the program. Now, the rod bit here, what we want to be able to do is we want to fix this axis, because this axis is not right. We've just made up something random. So we'll take that away. And the way we can make up the axis is, well, the, the axis is, one end of the axis is going to be the bob. Okay, so it's the bob dot position. Okay, so it's now getting to bob. It's found the position, which is a vector 5, 2, 0. So we've got bob position vector. And to get the, to find the axis, we can take, we can take one end uh, away from the other end. Because all we're doing is just taking, um, uh, like, um, two, uh, three, um, valued vectors and taking the components one away from another okay just to get the direction between uh, both ends okay so we've got bob dot position is one end and the other end is just the the pivot okay so we're just taking away the bob position from the, the pivot position okay so that there should then connect both those together so just check see about that you go bob up so if i run that Bum, bum, bum. Look what we've got. So right away, after about four lines of code, we've now got a nice little system set up, and it looks really quite nifty. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go and try and animate this thing. Okay. So but before we do that, we'll go in and we'll have a look at it inside the my smooth draw package here. So let me just bring that up. Okay, so this is how it's going to work. We've got our pendulum system here. Now, we're going to have to define an XY coordinate system. Okay, so we've, we'll define Y as positive running up that way, and X is positive running that way, just like a normal XY um, system. We're no bond about Z. Z is always going to be equal to zero. Okay, so this point here, which is a zero, zero point, is this point here, which is the bottom point of the bob. So that's the equilibrium position for the bob. So we're going to go and find out a few of these lines and how we write them in the code. So um, first of all, if we want the position of this bob and the x and y coordinates, then what we're looking for is the bob, okay, which we defined in the code. And it's the dot position. So it's the position of the bob. And it's going to be an x and y position. So, well, the x position there if we say x divided by l, it's going to be equal to the sine of this angle theta. So you can say then x equals l sine theta. Okay. Now the y position of the bob is going to be this little height here. Okay. So to get the y position of the bob, what you've got to do is you've got to look at the this full length here. So I put the daily full length there. Well, that full length there is just the length of the pendulum, l. Okay. So if I say l okay and then take away this length here from here to here okay well that length from there to there is just going to if we call that y say then y upon l would be cos theta okay so then you could say that y equals l cos theta so this length here from this point here to that point there okay is going to be l cos theta and then the full length is going to be l so that little length there which is a height will be l minus l cos theta okay so l minus l cos theta we put it in brackets it's l one minus cos theta okay so that there is going to give us our bob dot position 
Now, another thing we're interested in is the actual length of the uh, rod itself. Okay, so the length of the rod, well, what we can do is we can go to the, the bob position, which is our X, Y, and Z, and we can take away the pivot position, which is X, Y, Z. Okay, and then we can use a mathematical um, symbol, mag. Okay, so that's to find the magnitude. So that's going to find the magnitude, it's just going to find the length, uh, the length between those two vectors. Okay, so that's us now found that length. Okay, we can put that in our code. Another thing we're interested in is the angle theta. Okay, so we know that cos theta is going to be this distance here, okay, divided by this distance here, okay. Again, cos theta is this distance here, to there, to there, divided by L. So if we've got the divided by L bit already here, then we know this distance, this little, this distance here from there to there, it's going to be, well, it's going to be the, the full distance there, which is the pivot, but it's only the y component of the vector of the pivot we're interested in, so pivot dot y. And then if we take away this little distance here, okay, well this little distance here we've already said is going to be the it's going to be the y position of the bob. Okay, so it's just going to be minus bob dot position and it's dot y because it's only the y component of that vector. Okay, so that's really red is that that you get into the instance bob, you pull out the position, and you pull out the y component of that position. Okay, so that means that cos theta is given by that length there, which is this here, divided by the L. Okay, now, but we're actually interested not in cos theta, but actually in theta. So you can get theta by using the inverse cos. Okay, so it's actually, or you could write arc cos uh, theta. Okay, so that will give us our angle theta. Now, um, if you're unsure about the derivation here, the, the, the acceleration of this system is given by minus g, which is gravity, divided by L, which is the length, minus the sine of the angle theta. Well, that's the angle theta up there. Now, I've got a derivation of that in the section, the differential equation section, uh, differential equation playlist under single pendulum video. So you can go and have a look at that if you want, or equally you could go and have a look and the link down below to um, the uh, the original place where I got this program. Okay, so we have that equation there. Now, what we have to be able to do is we have to be able to update this angle theta, okay, each time uh, with some little change in it, okay, as 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 the bob moves, okay, so. We'll leave that for now, we'll go back to the code, we'll start coding this in, and we'll get to um, this little section just in a minute. Okay, so let's go back in. We'll get into Python, let's see. Um, oh, um, that's us there. Okay, so we know that we're going to have the, uh, the length of the bob, so we know that the length of L is going to equal the we always said it's going to be the magnitude of our bob dot position bob dot position uh, minus the pivot okay so that there will give us the magnitude of the of the length of the um, length of the line okay joining the length of the piece of string if you like. So we can call cos theta, again we'd cos theta was going to be pivot um, dot y minus bob dot position dot y and it's the whole lot of that divided by the value of L above. Okay, now the angle that's that CES, okay, yep, yeah, okay. Now the, that's the cos theta, but the actual value of theta to get theta, we've got the 
theta. Now theta is going to equal, well it's going to be um, the inverse course. The inverse course is actually given by A course. A stands for arc. Okay, so it's arc course the value CS. Okay, so that's what it's going to give us the value for our theta. Okay, now if we set up initial conditions, now the initial conditions is, well, it T is going to equal zero, so that's time equals zero. Now at time equals zero, um, we can put in our value for our velocity. So we say a velocity is going to equal zero. Okay, and if we make a small change in time dt, our dt is going to equal, we'll put in 0 0.01. Okay, <coughs> now we're going to have a loop here. Okay, so the loop is going to say while t is less than 100. Okay, so that's our while time is less than 100. And we have something here called the rate. So that's just the, uh, the number of calculations it makes every second. So the rate equals 100. So it's going to do 100 of these calculations um, per second. Now, what is it going to calculate? Well, it's going to calculate the acceleration. So we know, so already know acceleration equals minus uh, g divided by L. And that's times sine over angle, which is sine over angle theta. Okay, now we've also got to define up here our value of g. So, value of gravity, um, we put it down as 9.81. So, acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, now what we have to be able to do is we're going to be able to um, calculate the new value of theta. Okay, so we can say that our value, new value of theta is going to equal well, the old value of theta and it's going to be plus the going to be our, our velocity times dt. So it's going to be a velocity times dt. Okay, now you can see that's going to work because um, the acceleration here is a negative value. Okay, and the uh, Whenever we work out the velocity, so the, the change in well, you actually see it down here. If we put in the change in velocity, so the change in velocity, velocity equals the initial velocity plus the acceleration times dt. That's like just the old uh, simple simple equation um, of motion where you have the uh, initial velocity, the final velocity equals initial velocity times x plus acceleration times time, okay, or V equals U plus AT, you've never used to seen it written like that. So we can see here acceleration is uh, a negative, going to be a, a, a negative value, okay, um, and whenever we're dropping the value in here, um, we're actually going to be subtracting off, although it says, although it says plus, the velocity DT is actually um, going to be a uh, a smaller value okay so it means that um, the value of theta is going to be uh, smaller and smaller each time round okay so that there is going to give us our updates but we still got to tell it the actual new positions okay so we just got to get the bob so it's the bob dot position is going to change now the bob position again it's going to be given by the, the vector okay and the position is going to be well it's just our x and y position again so it's just going to be our l times our sine of our angle theta and the y position so it's just going to be our pivot okay it's a pivot dot y minus L times our uh, 
cos of theta and the z position is just going to be zero okay now not only is the bob moving but the axis on the rod is going to move as well so it means we can get access to that axis so we put rod dot axis will allows us to update that now the rod axis is going to be well it's the bob dot position okay so that's one end minus the the rod position which is the the other end okay so that there is the final part now what we're going to do is get the time and update the time t equals t plus dt okay so and that there is the end of our little bit of script so we'll just have a quick look through and see if we've made any boobs any glaring boobs rate uh is minus one theta theta is theta plus dt pole position equals vector one times theta pivot dot y equals one times cos theta it's okay Bob. okay so i'll run this and see if we can get the actually up and running so that's the program up and running you see the pendulum moving back and forward it's moving quite slowly at the moment but you can adjust the speed that these things move by just adjusting these uh, positions at the number of calculations so if you adjust the number of calculations to let's say 0.1 and let's see how how that affects it and you can see it running away there okay and we can just set up the number of length of time so we've put that down as 20 of course when you adjust this dt each adjustment of dt will make it um, less and less accurate okay um, so just try this out at the moment and we'll let it run uh, like this and note as well i had forgot to put the this little coal on here and also when it was running you had to ensure that these were indented so if i had taken these and placed them back here it was no longer running so i had to ensure that the um, everything under that while loop was sitting indented okay uh, so i'll run the program again and now you can see it running away okay gradually it would, it would run off okay um and it would run into a chaotic uh, kind of condition because the um the value dt um, are, are not are not small okay um, and the angle would not be a small angle either okay so that's really um it for the moment so that that's my uh, first bit of script granted i never wrote it myself but um, um i will try and write some script for some of the other stuff in the differential equation so i hope that's use value to some of you okay thank you for listening and goodbye